Hello and welcome back to Redwood Acres. Today we got another Laura Mesh Communications video. We're going to be continuing our testing with a, you know, the concept of an airborne relay, airborne repeater setup with a solar, or not a solar, but a <coughs> Laura device suspended below my DJI Mini drone. We'll get into more details. Uh, before we start though, hey, if you like morale patches, like you know, some of these over here, one of my favorites right now is the three B's bourbon, bacon, and brew, uh, Tim, the tool man's workshop or tool man, Tim's workshop. He has the patch of the month club. His latest one just got here. Must be nice. Love it. Um, <clears throat> if you know what it means, you know what it means. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll put a link right here in the right hand corner. You can check it out. It's $10 a month. You get a, a, a patch morale patch per month. I think it's worth it. Check them out. <clears throat> All right. That aside, um, so we started our testing. The original video, I'll link also here in the right-hand corner with this T Echo in a different configuration. It was a little less weight than that. This has got an expanded battery pack on it now. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. And a uh, different antenna. We are going to be using a rack wireless in this 3D, 3D printed case with a 500 milliamp hour small battery right here. You see that? That's pretty small. Uh, this is going to be screwed down in here. I'll probably only use two screws just to minimize weight. The Bluetooth antenna is still attached for uh, programming purposes once we get ready to start the test, the range testing. And then this case, the way it works, it just snaps closed. Uh, and of course, I'm probably going to make some uh, holes for the, the antenna. Right now, I just have this small little board antenna that comes from Rack Wireless. <clears throat> I have another antenna uh, in route that's a type for kind of like a drone. It's a V-type, so I think it'll, it might work a little better. I also need to make uh, an, an attachment point to attach to my little fishing line with the... Uh, hook I got here at the end, this quick release style to hook into that. Um, <clears throat> so all said, right, we're looking at my goal was under five or under two ounces, uh, and we're at 1.6 ish. I might get a little heavier with like the two pieces of hardware, you know, maybe screws. <clears throat> and then uh, I originally started off with this case uh, and just, it wasn't, it, once I got it fully enclosed, it was way, way over the weight. So these are all 3D printed cases. So obviously you'd need a 3D printer to, uh, to do that. This one does allow for the snap case, uh, does allow for commercial reproduction. So if you're interested in one of those, uh, let me know, uh, and we could talk. So Okay, so the testing will be done here in my local area. All right, after action review, what went right, what went wrong? Well, we learned a lot. That's good, right? First, before I get too much into that, let's just talk configuration and equipment I use. So to configure your devices for automatic range testing, link in the video for the comms channel. He does a great job explaining that. I used that video to set my devices up for this testing. So check that out tools I used, of course, the DJI drone you see, this whiz block we talked about earlier in the video that I built, still waiting on that, the better antenna, uh, this uh, skids to connect things to our T-Echo, a T-beam here at the house, not that one, but the other ones, it's in the other room, so, um, and the more difficult part is actually having enough Android devices or devices that you're, you have the Mesh Access app on to connect to. So I have an old cell phone I had connected to the T-Beam here at the house. I have to use my phone when I'm flying the drone because I don't have the more expensive controller, maybe someday, right? Uh, priorities. <laughs> but the I couldn't see what was going on when I'm flying the drone with the network. So the first time I launched this for some reason, like went into sleep mode or something, came back down, realized it nothing was going on there was wasn't even powered on got it powered back on got it connected launched again 
hoping that I'm sending out those automatic messages every 15 seconds and don't know that nothing went out or I didn't make connection until I get home because when I get home, the Android device I had at home for some reason disconnected from the T-Beam. So we had all kinds of technical problems. I did it when no one was at home, so there's nobody I could call back to and verify that things were working. So and maybe this next time I need to make sure that, you know, someone's at home so that I can have them check on it. It'll work a lot better. Uh, so that's what we learned. Um, what was our testing uh, solution or actually like how high did i fly i guess it would probably be a question someone might ask we flew up to 300 feet i restricted myself to 300 just because i was in and around not within the restricted area of a municipal airport here in my local community but close enough that i've seen small aircraft like small helicopters and planes that appear to be down around that 400 or maybe a little less um so just to give us a safety buffer I, I stuck with 300 plus I did some simple calculations using CalTOPO, which I will link here in the video or down below. Great app. I'm going to do a future video on that. That tool it is an awesome tool for this and other things. Um, and figured that at 300 feet above ground level uh, would put me like 470 feet high in altitude um, that should be able to meet our get past the terrain in between that location and our home and connect to the repeater here. If things were working right, it might have worked. I don't know. We'll see on the next testing. So what I'm going to add before the next testing is the upgraded antenna, the better antenna, just so that I can eliminate that as the a possible failure point. Uh, I got an old Samsung tablet I need to find and dig out and get it charged and get the Mestacid app on there and make sure everything works so that I can use that kind of as my, you know, connected to the network to see what's going on, see if messages are being sent, you, you know, monitor what's going on with the, with the testing. So those are the things I'm going to add. Other than that, I'm going to pretty much repeat the same test. If I get successful connection and messages sent from the first location, we have a secondary location I want to test. Ultimately, by the end of those testing, if I'm successful with those two locations, we'll cover easily cover with uh, that with that airborne relay being or a repeater being up at 300 feet. We'll have cover potentially have covered about a 10 mile radius. I'm sure there'd be some dead spots in there, but pretty awesome. I hope you guys stay tuned for more. You can check us out at theravenwoodacres.com. Subscribe to the channel, like follow us connect with us via our other social media links were linked below check out the other links down below there's a lot of information down there stuff you might be interested in come back for the next video have a great day see you next time